Hello everyone, this is Edge with Neo News Today, and in today's video we will be looking at the Neo Blockchain Toolkit by Neo Global Development Seattle. Uh, the latest update, version 1.0, includes some changes for the visual dev tracker that should hopefully make this a little bit more accessible for people by allowing you to do a lot of the things that you would do through the command line. You can now instead do them straight through the dev tracker UI itself, which is really handy. And today we'll be using that to set up a private network, we'll manage a wallet, create a contract, deploy, and then invoke it to make sure that everything works as expected. So first things first, you're gonna to need to get installed. The easiest way to do that is to view this quick start guide here that they've provided. This is gonna show you the installation steps that you'll need to follow. After that, we're good to go. So let's hop down here to the Neo Dev Tracker icon. And you can see here, we actually have RPC nodes for the main net and the test net. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna click th these three buttons here, Neo Express instance. And here we are able to create ourselves a private blockchain. I see we can select the number of nodes. I recommend sticking with one. It just allows you to use the checkpointing feature, which is kind of handy. So let's go ahead and create that. And we can see there it is up here. And now that we've got that created, we can click start to get it running. And that's all it takes. There we have a Genesis block of our own Neo private blockchain. And there's block number two straight afterwards. So that's all running fine. But now what? Well, now we want to take all of the Neo that were minted in this Genesis block and we want to move them into an account that we actually control. We have two ways to do this. We can either right click here on the private network instance itself and click create Neo Express wallet, give it a name, and that will create the wallet and it will save the wallet details within the same file. You can see here, wallets Alice. This will actually save it within the same file as the private network instance itself. Alternatively, you can come up to create new NEP6 wallet file. This will allow you to make a password protected file and it will also do it in its own location. So if you wanna keep things separate, that's also an, op an option for you. So now that we've created our wallet, let's transfer the assets from the Genesis block. So there we have the Genesis wallet, one of one multi-sig. And we're gonna grab ourselves all 100 million Neo and we're gonna send them to the Alice wallet. Now let's just give that a second to persist. You can see that the last block that was persisted is block five. So now we're just gonna wait for block six, which should hopefully contain our transaction. And there we can see that's worked just fine. So from this point, we're gonna start gathering gas ray to be claimed on the Alice wallet. To speed that process up, ready for us to deploy a contract, I'm gonna go ahead and speed this blockchain up. You can't currently specify a block time when triggering the blockchain using the, uh, the start icon here. So you'll need to do that through the command line itself. Uh, I have it on good authority from Harry that something they're working on the future is making sure that everything you can do in the toolkit, you'll be able to do it through the UI. So something to look out for in a future update. So while this is chooching away, let's go ahead and open ourselves up a new contract. So .NET new Neo dash contract. This will grab the template hello world contract that NGD Seattle has provided. If this command doesn't work, then it just means you haven't followed the installation steps correctly. So just make sure that you have. And if we come down into our Explorer here, we can see there's the contract. Now I'm actually gonna change just one thing in this contract once my C-sharp extension stops being funny. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change world here to something else. Uh, Tyrannosaurus, let's change it to that. The only reason I'm doing this is because, well, I don't know, maybe there's already a Hello World contract deployed here, or, you know, I just wanna show that this really is the contract that's being deployed to our private blockchain. So making that change is uh, is an easy way to do that. We can see up here in this assembly attribute that there is uh, the has storage flag. Since this contract is using blockchain storage, that costs extra on the deploy for, uh, for a Neo contract. So this contract creation here will be 500 gas because we are actually using the storage attribute. So that's something to watch out for. If you see that this deploy only costs 90 gas, then you'll know that something has gone wrong here. Okay, so let's just save that. And let's do .NET build. And there we go. So what have we done there? We've compiled the contract to the AVM form. This is the bytecode that will be read by NeoVM. We have the ABI file, which contains metadata. So let's have a look, quick peek at that. There it is. So you can see it has our metadata and also that we have the storage enabled. And finally, we have the debug info. I'm not gonna show you how to use the debugger in this video. Um, if you wanna go and watch the like hour and a half long video I did with Harry and Ricardo, we'll link in the description. There's a load of information from Harry in that video that will guide you around using that. 
So now that we've created and compiled our contract, we need to get ready to deploy it. So let's go ahead and claim ourselves the gas we need to deploy. Now, something you'll notice when you immediately go to claim gas, Alice doesn't have any claimable gas. That's because we haven't done a transfer that allows the network to calculate how many blocks we've held onto that much Neo. Therefore, it can't work out how much gas it needs to give us. Easy way to fix that, just transfer ourselves all the Neo to the same account. This is the same thing that happens when, say, you do a claim in Neon Wallet and it sends your Neon bounds to yourself in order to, for you to be able to do the claim. So now that we've done that, we can go to claim, Alice, and there we can see all the gas ready to go. So let's claim that gas. Cool, we can see that transaction two has been persisted. And let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit. I'm just gonna run it at five seconds. If you're using the start button here, it'll run at the default speed, which I believe is 15 seconds. So I like say three, five seconds. Now let's go ahead and deploy this contract. You can see it's automatically grabbed the AVM file for us. I'm gonna say I'm gonna deploy it with Alice. I just realized I uh, stopped the blockchain accidentally. So let's fix that. Uh, deploy. There we go. So now we can see this transaction has been persisted within a block. Actually, it hasn't been confirmed yet. So let's just go back out. Hide empty blocks. There it is. Found a guess. So we can see that our contract has been deployed properly. Contract create. And since it's consumed 500 gas, we know that it has set the storage attribute as expected. So this contract should work properly now. So we're gonna do two things. You can't do these, th these commands through the UI just yet. So for now, we'll just have to use the command line. So we're gonna do new express contract get, and then we're gonna go into our folder that the compiled contract is living in. And we're gonna go have a little look at the information. So here we can see the hash, we can see the different metadata, and we can also see the storage dynamic invokes uh, attributes, whether they've been actually uh, included on this contract or not. The other thing we can do is check the contract storage. And as you can see, there is no storage. So although we have already deployed this contract to the blockchain, what we haven't done is invoked the contract. So it hasn't written the uh, the key value pair into its storage. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we just invoke it. So let's go to invoke. So from within here, you can see all available smart contracts. We're gonna go into the demo contract, into the main method, and we can see here some useful information about uh, how you can use this little invoke feature. So you can either call a method locally, which will just literally run it locally. So we can see, for example, how much gas is consumed, but this will not cause anything to persist on the blockchain because we haven't broadcast a transaction. We can also run it through the debugger, uh, optionally using the checkpoints as well. So this is, for example, say I made a checkpoint at block height 200 and I'd invoked the contract once and written a particular value to storage. And then I've changed that and I wanna say, no, I wanna go back to that state. Well, then I could go back to that checkpoint, launch the debugger and it would pull the storage from as it was at the checkpoint. So it's quite a nice little feature. But in order to actually get this command here to work for us, we're gonna go ahead and actually invoke the contract. So let's broadcast the transaction to the blockchain. You can see that that's been persisted at block 225. And we can go and check out that. We can see it's not faulted, it's halted properly. Same gas consumption as expected. And now when we go ahead and do contract storage and have a look in demo.avm, we can see the values in the storage. We can see the key, hello, and we can see the value Tyrannosaurus. So we can see that it's all working properly and that's all it, that's all there is to it. So hope you've all enjoyed this video. Um, excellent work to NGD Seattle on this toolkit and hopefully they'll get some Python support included soon so that I can uh, start plumbing away on some newbie contracts. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next time.